All right, YouTube fam, we got a new one today. We got a new one today. Let's get it going. Let's get it going. So here's the thing. Right here is the thing. Make sure I'm not connected. Okay, cool. Here's the thing, guys. A lot of people keep saying that, hey, um, I really want to get lean. I want to get lean, man. I want to get lean. But you're focusing on weight loss instead of fat loss. I just got off the call um, with a future client, nice client, ready to change his life, by the way. Link will be in the description if you guys are ready to change your life and get into the best shape of your life. But anyways, a lot of people are too focused and fixated on weight loss instead of fat loss. And they're wondering like, oh my God, like I got down to the way I wanted to get to. I reached my goals, but I don't look how I want to look. Yeah, duh, dumbass, because you focused on weight loss and you lost a lot of fucking muscle. All right, stop focusing primarily on weight loss. Focus on fat loss, guys. All right, let's get into it. So what the fuck does weight loss even mean, right? So listen, weight loss is going to refer to a decrease in overall body weight, which means you're going to be focusing on the scale, right? And the thing is, with weight loss, yes, it includes fat. But a lot of times, especially if you're losing weight really quickly, you're losing muscle. And then, of course, water and other shit, right? Now, fat loss is literally focusing on preserving lean muscle mass and reducing fat, right? So when some people come to me and they're like, hey, man, like, I just, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm two months in, man, and I lost, you know, I lost 50 pounds. You can't lose 50 pounds of fat in two months unless you're 710 pounds, all right? And I don't think you're 710 pounds. You're like 250, and you lost 50 pounds in two months. Now, your body composition is not going to be where you want it to be, right? And a lot of people have been asking me, like, bro, like, I, I just noticed that I, I have a lot of saggy skin, and, like, you know, I'm skinny fat, and I'm not really getting toned how I want to. Of course you're not because you're losing a lot of muscle mass. And the more lean body mass you lose – the slower your metabolism will be because the more lean body mass you have, not only will you be more aesthetic, but also you're going to have a better metabolism because it takes more calories to maintain muscle than it does to just maintain, you know, weight. So, for example, for example, how do I go back on this motherfucker? Yeah. For example, right here, this was my first bulk. I got it to 203, but I look fluffy as shit, right? Because I was 203 and I didn't have as much muscle mass. Years later, when I reached 203, going down from my bulk, Look how I look. I bulked up this time to like what, 215. But look how I looked. I was 203 and I have way more muscle. So what does this mean? This means that weight loss is not the primary thing you need to focus on. You need to focus on fat loss and body composition. A lot of you guys want the aesthetic physique that you see in Fight Club from Brad Pitt. A lot of you guys want the aesthetic physique you see in 300. If you want the muscle mass, you have to make sure that you prioritize fat loss. All right. All right. So Here's why you should focus on fat loss as well. Obviously, like I said, weight loss is going to include muscle mass a lot of the times. When people start themselves and do keto, they're going to lose a lot of they're going to lose a lot of muscle and they're going to be frustrated. All right, weight loss is too aggressive and it can be unhealthy. When you focus on weight loss, you only care about the weight going down. You don't care what the context is. You don't care if it's fat or if it's muscle. You just want to get rid of the weight. And what ends up happening is, like I said, you end up not having the body composition you want. Most people, when I say, I want to lose weight, what they mean is they want to lose fat. Ask somebody what they want to look like. Does someone want to be skinny fat at their end goal, or do they want to be shredded like Gerard Butler in 300? Let's be honest, all right? Now, fat loss is also going to preserve muscle and improve metabolism. Like I said, the more lean body mass you have, the faster your metabolism will be, all right? Which means you can consume more calories. And obviously, the aesthetic physique everyone's going for is primarily focused on maintaining muscle while losing fat, guys. All right, so like I said, the scale without context is useless. You guys saw my picture in the beginning, but look at this right here. This is him when he's 175, and this is also him when he's 175. Now, a lot of people will be like, hey, man, I want to be 175 so bad, bro. I'm gonna be 175. And, they, and they rush the process. They do keto, they do carnivore, or they do like a, a extended water fast, and then they don't lift weights. They do a bunch of cardio, so they lose a lot of weight. Congratulations, but they look like this instead of looking like this. Now, even though this takes longer, obviously it's more worth it because once you reach this, you're going to maintain that. So for example, if you're 200 pounds, say he was 200 pounds at the start. If it takes him six months to drop the 25 pounds and he looks like this, that's a fucking win, right? Versus if it takes him three months to drop the 25 pounds and he looks like this, then he's cooked. Cause now you got to start all, he got to start all over and gain his muscle back. He's, he's cooked, man. He's fucked. All right. So here's the thing guys that people don't understand when it comes to weight loss, you can be under or at your BMI and unhealthy. It happens all the time. You see people who are skinny fat. They have a lot of belly fat. I've seen skinny people with type 2 diabetes or insulin resistance because they eat like shit. Now, their arms are skinny, but their stomach is big. Where you carry your fat is very indicative of metabolic metabolic syndrome, which is obviously type 2 diabetes, high cholesterol, sleep apnea, all that other shit, right? So when you have a lot of belly fat, it can increase the risk of that. So that's why I said it's very important that you focus on fat loss, not just weight loss. And you can be over your BMI and healthy. Like when I was 203, obviously my waist size was what, 32? 
So all my numbers are good when I went to the doctor, but I was over my BMI because my BMI was like, what, 188 or 190 or some shit, but I was obviously healthy. BMI does not take into account muscle mass. So primarily, primarily only focusing on the weight is going to be dumb as hell, right? And a lot of you guys do this. You're like, oh, I want to drop weight fast. I want to drop weight fast. Okay, go ahead and drop weight fast. Anything fast doesn't last. You're going to regret it. You're going to be pissed. You're going to be sad, all right? Now, like I said, I go live every day on TikTok. So I talk about this a lot on TikTok and a lot of people are like, hey, man, I really need help. I lost five, uh, 50 pounds in three months and I have a lot of saggy skin. I don't look how I want to look. That, that's I, I get that every single day. People are getting skinny fat because they're rushing the process. You can only lose so much fat at once, guys. Yeah, the weight can go down, but a lot of that could be muscle. Like I said, you can have two people who are 190. One could be 9% body fat with the 29 inch waist and someone could be 35% body fat with the 40 inch waist and they're the same fucking weight. Right. So weight without context doesn't matter when you're focused on body composition and losing fat and maintaining muscle. You got to focus on progress pictures, waist size. Obviously, how you look in the mirror and body fat. All right. So weight loss, weight loss, weight loss, guys. Now, look how many big backs are in this country. Forty four hundred reviews already. This shit just came out. bro. This shit premiered like a fucking album. But anyways, basically, if you are focused on weight loss, you just want to be in a deficit like. When, when you're eating for weight loss, you just eat in the deficit. That means you can eat chips, you can eat crumble cookie as long as it fits in your deficit. Now, what's going to happen is your body composition is going to suffer. All right, it's going to suffer. A lot of people are like, hey, I lost weight, I ate whatever I wanted to. Yeah, but you have no muscle mass and you look like shit. All right, and you have no aesthetics and you're pissed because you're just eating in a deficit, but you're eating a bunch of sugary food, a bunch of bullshit. Like when you're eating sugary foods, you're eating low protein, eating processed foods, you're going to tend to have a more skinny fat look than someone who is eating more whole foods and eating higher protein. All right. Fat loss is going to prioritize protein, not only to maintain your muscle mass, but also to make sure that you even gain muscle. Because if you haven't lifted weights in a long time, you technically can't gain muscle and lose fat at the same time. But if you haven't lifted weights ever and you start eating high protein and you're in a slight deficit and you have high protein, you're going to gain some muscle. All right. So prioritizing protein is going to make sure that you gain slash maintain your muscle and the quality of foods are going to make sure that you are able to sustain it. Right. Because if you're eating this, Right. It's eleven hundred calories and say you have eighteen hundred calories to eat. So if you eat this and you have to finish finish out your macros, you could barely eat anything else like six, six ounces of chicken breast and one sweet potato and this. And you're already at your calories for the day. That's not going to keep you satiated. It's going to be unsustainable versus when you eat a lot of whole foods, you could fit a fuckload of shit into the eighteen hundred calorie range. All right. Sustainability with weight loss. So like I said, when you pri when you primarily focus on weight loss on the scale, you literally become a madman. You look at the fucking scale every single day. How many times have you let gaining half a pound on the scale or 0.2 pounds on the scale make you panic? When in reality, you need to pay, pay attention to did your waist size go down? Did your waist size go up? How are you feeling? How do you look? Like a lot of times, I'll, uh, I, I don't weigh myself every day anymore, but last time I was weighing myself every day, I remember I was doing everything I needed to do. And like the scale was staying the same for a while. And I, I didn't really care because I was looking in the mirror. I was like, dude, I look fucking, I'm looking better. I can tell it's working, right? But that's only because I did it a few times because I did have times where I used to step on the scale every day. And I'm like, oh my God, I gained 0 0.2, 0 0.2 pounds. I'm fucked. And it's like, guys, you're going to have periods of time where you gain weight or you, your weight stays the same. And you're going to have periods of time where you lose a lot of, a lot more weight, right? The average, the line of best fit is, is the most important thing because if you take a six month sample of someone losing weight, they'll average about one to two pounds, you know, and they'll reach their goal easily. However, if you stay fixated in the day to day, the going up 0.2, going down 0.4, you're going to panic because of course it's going to go up and down. It's like, for example, it's like, you know, you're getting paid in two weeks, right? Just say it's the first of the month. All your bills come out from the first to the 14th. And you know, you're getting paid a lot in two weeks and you'll be fine. Right. But you focus on, oh my God, rent came out on the first. Oh my God, Spotify came out on the second. Oh my God, my insurance came out on the third. Carnot came out on the fourth. I'm fucked. I'm fucked. You're not trusting the process because you know on you know on the 14th when you get paid, you know you're gonna be you're gonna be in a in a uh, surplus and you'll be fine. But you're focused on the day to day and you're focused on the small losses. You're not looking at the bigger picture because yeah, you can you can gain you know one pound after doing everything you needed to for a week. You can gain two pounds after doing everything you needed to for a week. But if you're gaining muscle and losing fat, you're still on path. All right. For example, if if you have a goal to lose you know 48 pounds in six months. Right. That's going to be about damn. I can't do math. This is crazy. as hell. yeah, that's going to be that's going to be eight pounds a month, which means two pounds per week. So in the first month, you might lose if you lose 16 pounds in the first month and lose zero pounds in the second month. But you're losing inches. You're still on pace. You're literally still on pace. You see what I'm saying? You got it. You got to track the pace. If you lose zero pounds in the first month and 16 pounds in the second month, you're still on pace. If you lose four pounds in the first month, 12 pounds in the second month, you're still on pace. All right. 
you just got to focus on that fat loss as well. But weight loss makes you focus on the scale way too much and you get obsessed with it. Any variation in the numbers makes you panic and you start to not trust the process. And then you don't give the process enough time to work because what people don't realize is the work always works is whether or not you gave it enough time to work. And a lot of times people don't give it enough time to work. They're like, oh, my God, I, I gained one pound in two weeks, not knowing that they lost two inches off their waist and they gained muscle and they just quit. You got to give it time to work because nothing works without time. It just doesn't. You can't get a bachelor's degree in one day. It takes four years. It, it just is what it is. You can't get paid your salary in, in one day if you're on a salary job. You get paid biweekly. All right, sustainability with fat loss. So fat loss generally focuses on you doing the habits and becoming the person that you need to become to reach your goals. And you realize initially that, yeah, it, it, it's going to take patience. And yeah, the scale is going to go up and down, right? When you are going for fat loss, you know, yeah, the scale is going to go up and down. It'll be fine, right? You focus on how your clothes fit, how you're feeling energetic wise, your vital signs when you go to the, the doctor. Like after a couple of months, you go to the doctor, you take your vital signs, it'll be much better. Right. You also you also focus on, like I said, how you're feeling, your daily nutrition and all of those things. And that's going to help you actually solidify the habits instead of just focusing on, oh, my God, this kid, this kid go up. Ah, all that dumb shit. All right. So it takes longer to lose the fat, but when you lose it, you keep it off majority of the time. All right. So slower and steady progress is often more sustainable leading to long term results. We all know that shit. So when you don't feel like you have to lose 15 pounds in one fucking week, you're going to be more patient. All right. For me personally, I'm always looking at the waist size because many times I'm like, you know what? Let me start. Let me start a mini cut. You should, let me start a mini cut. Right. If I start a mini cut, I know that the first week I don't give a fuck if I gain or lose weight. If I lose fat, lose inches off my waist and I'm, I'm looking leaner, then I'm good. I'm good to go. I'm good to go. You know what I'm saying? So that's the most important thing. And we got to realize this is a lifestyle change. So generally with fat loss, knowing that you go in with more patience and knowing that the scale isn't everything and knowing that this is a lifestyle change, it makes it easier for you to maintain your results once you reach some weight loss. It's like, oh, I, I reached my weight. Oh, let me stop looking at the scale and just eat whatever I want to. And then you end up gaining. All right. So waist circumference versus waist guy, versus weight. My bad. All right, so listen, guys, listen, listen, listen. This is this is some medical shit. We all know this medical shit, but it's very important. So men with the waist size over 40 and women with the waist size over 35, it should say 35, are at increased risk for sleep apnea, insulin resistance, type 2, heart disease, hypertension, hyperlipidemia, right? So I've actually diagnosed some clients, which, I mean, I'm not a doctor, but fuck it. I actually... Uh, uh, diagnose some clients like before they came to me. I, I saw their waist circumference. I'm like, yeah, you have insulin resistance, and they're like, what are you talking about? You have insulin resistance. You don't even know. They go to the doc they go to the doctor and they have insulin resistance. So then we got to work on bringing it down, right? Because the thing is, when your nutrition is horrible and you store a lot of you know stomach fat, generally for the most part, you're gonna have majority of these, or at least be at risk for them. You're gonna have the pre hypertensive, pre you know pre high cholesterol, pre insulin resistant, or you're gonna be pre diabetic. I mean. So it, it, it's like 100% of the time your waist is above 40. It's usually because of your bad habits, right? So it's kind of like when you know someone, they're always using like Afterpay and they're, 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 they're check to check, but they want to buy like the newest thing. You already know by default their credit is ass, right? You know their credit's ass just by the way their habits are versus somebody who's like, you know, always paying on time and, and you know, consistent, never living outside their means, very patient. You know their credit's good, all right? Like my, when my credit was like 440, I don't know what it is now. It's like above 750 or some shit. I don't fucking know. But when it was 440, my habits were the reason why. You feel me? Like now I'm just like, I don't spend money on anything and I stay super chill. And I'm I live below my means. How many times have you guys seen me wear this Nike shirt in a video? Like, come on. Like, how many? Bro, I've been wearing this Nike shirt for like four years. Just kidding. Five years. And I got it at Ross, bro. Like, come on, bro. But anyways, yeah. So I've trained people that are within their BMI, but they're on blood pressure medication because obviously their waist circumference was high but their weight was okay. So weight isn't, weight without context doesn't matter. All right, guys, like without context, you can't really say, oh yeah, you're healthy at six, six foot 185. You can be he healthy and unhealthy at six foot 185. All right, one more time, guys, why you should focus on fat loss. Very, very fucking important. If you're training for aesthetics, which most people are, most people that come to me, they wanna get toned, they wanna be aesthetic. If you're training for aesthetics, metabolism and health, fat loss is way more important than just weight loss. If you got two people starting at 5'10", 220, 30% body fat, and the goal is 180 lean. If one focuses on weight loss, he'll get there faster for sure. Definitely get there faster. But he'll probably be, you know, 18% body fat at 180, which is ass. And the other one will probably, you know, take six plus months, but they'll be 180 to 185 at like 12%. So the second guy is going to have more muscle mass, better metabolism, overall healthier. They're going to have better body composition. And in a re more realistic example, I would say someone gets from 220 to because because yesterday people were telling me they're on the live. They tell me they dropped 40 pounds in like two to three months. So 
more realistically, it'll be two to three months and like 24% body fat, to be honest. All right, guys, now tracking your progress. So like I said, when you are focused on fat loss, not weight loss, you're going to be focusing on weight size. You know, the scale is going to go up and down. Don't don't let that, you know, discourage you. So do scale weekly or biweekly and then focus on your weight size, focus on your habits, focus on how you're fitting clothes, your strength, your vital signs. All those things are more important. Now, exactly like what I do for my clients is basically what I just told you guys. Right. So as you can see, there's a lot of fat loss in all these pictures, there's a lot of fat loss, big stomach, little stomach. Big stomach, little stomach, big stomach, little stomach, big stomach, little stomach, right? Focusing on fat loss, which is why it's sustainable. Everyone sustains the results. So it's very, very important that you guys focus on fat loss. Now, link is in the description if you guys are interested in one-on-one -on -one coaching. Serious inquiries only because we locked in over here. Listen, I practice what I preach. I don't even practice what I preach. I preach what I practice. You feel me? Like a lot of people are like, damn, I, I got to tighten up on nutrition so I can, you know, so I can lead by example. No, I, my nutrition is on point and then I preach what I practice. That's how I lead by example.